No, you're one of the club. <laughs> okay, today we're looking at another two of the minor prophets. So maybe these are names that you haven't heard of. You heard of? Ah, oh, this is who you're named after. Zephaniah, Zephis. There you go. You're in one of the books of the Bible. So we're looking at book number 35 and 36, just to give you an idea of how far we're through in the Bible. At the end of the year, we should be getting to number 66. Is that what you want to say? I've heard of Habakkuk. You heard of Habakkuk. So how do you pronounce this one, Simon? Habakkuk. Habakkuk. How do you guys want to say that together? You ready? Habakkuk. Habakkuk. And this one, Zephi knows how to pronounce this, Zephi? Zephaniah. Very good. So these are quite long names. These are Hebrew names, aren't they? That's why they sound a little different to the names we have. So this one is Zephaniah. You want to say that together? Zephaniah. So 35 and 36. So I'll just give you a quick overview of these two books because they're very short. How many chapters do you think are in these two books? They're very small. Who wants to have a guess? All right, you've got to put your hand up. 36, that's pretty big for a book. How many chapters? Let me give you a get. Let me give you a clue. It's less than five. All right, Simon. Four. Four. Keep going. Mateo. One. No, more than that. Three. Three. That's right. So if you go and read these books in your Bible, sometimes it's a bit hard to find because there are only three chapters in there. But if you look in the middle, you'll find them. You'll find Habakkuk and Zephaniah. So just a brief overview. I just want to share two verses from each book, and then we're going to play some games. So Habakkuk, what is this story about? Well, the minor prophets, these guys are preaching to the kingdom of Judah a bit later on, about 600 BC, they believe. And Habakkuk's book, he's looking at all the evil and all the bad things that are happening in his nation, and he's asking God, why? Why is God letting all this happen? Why is all these bad things happening? So do, you guys, do you ever sometimes ask yourself why? Maybe somebody's being mean to you. Or you see something naughty going on, and you're like, why does God allow these things? Well, Habakkuk's thinking the same thing in his nation. Because he sees all this wickedness, because remember the nation of Judah and Israel, that was sometimes very evil, and they were worshipping idols, worshipping statues, and doing very wicked things. And Habakkuk's thinking, why? When is God going to do something about this? But then in his book, he's reminded. You know? So this is uh, Habakkuk 1.3, I'll just read it for you. Look at what he says. He says, Why dost thou show me iniquity? See, why is he seeing all the bad things in his nation? And cause me to behold grievance, for spoiling and violence are before me. What is violence? Violence is when you do bad things to innocent people. And there are that raise up strife and contention. So you see how Habakkuk is saying, Why, God, is he allowing this? But... This is one of the more famous passages in Habakkuk 2 because it's quoted in Romans as well. He says, Behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him, but the just shall live by his faith. It's just like all the other minor prophets, there's always a theme going through it, isn't there? And what's the theme? Is that even though the nation has been wicked, God still provides a way to give them mercy for them to come back to God. And how is it? In Habakkuk 2, we see the just shall live by his faith. It's by what we believe. So that's a brief overview of Habakkuk 2. And then in Habakkuk 3, we see here Habakkuk referring to the salvation of God. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. So even though he's looking around, he's seeing all the wickedness, and he's saying, why God? But he's reminded, hey, God is good. God will punish the wicked and he will justify the righteous. And how do we do it? Is it because of our own good works? Because we're so good? No, we are sinners. We need to believe on Jesus. The just shall live by his faith. Now, Zephaniah is around the same time as well, preaching a little bit a little bit before, uh, a little bit after Habakkuk. But his message is a little bit different. 
the same time he's reminding Judah of their wickedness and their rebellion against God, and he's not asking the question why. He knows why. He's just warning them that one day, if they do not believe on Jesus, judgment is coming. So when you read through Zephaniah's, well, this is why it says the dark clouds behind Zephaniah. Zephaniah's a little bit angrier in this picture, and the fire, because what he's reminding them that one day God's day of wrath is coming. So they better believe on him so they'll be spared from that judgment. Let's look at some verses quickly here from Zephaniah. Zephaniah 1, look at what he says when he says God's going to come and judge. He's talking about the return when Jesus comes back again. We need to make sure we're ready when Jesus returns. How do we get ready? Is it by being good? I don't know. We need to be ready by believing our faith. The just shall live by his faith. So what about Zephaniah 1? Look at what he warns him. He says, that day, which day is he talking about? He's talking about when Jesus returns, when God comes back. That day is a day of wrath, a day of trouble and distress. You see how it's very negative here? A day of wasteness and desolation. This is when God is going to destroy a lot of things and leave it destroyed. A day of darkness. Remember this darkness? You see how that's his message? And gloominess. A day of clouds and thick darkness. Wow, you think sometimes when the light goes off, it's dark. You already think darkness is dark enough. The Bible says thick darkness gets even darker than that. And so we want to be spared from that, don't we? But look, just like in every minor prophet, that's why the Bible says, hey, when we look through the minor prophets, they're all talking about Jesus. We're reminded all the time about our sinfulness and how we need Jesus. Even in Zephaniah, we see here, remember, it's got three chapters. Look at verse 20. This is the very last verse. It says, At that time will I bring you again, even in the time that I gather you. So you see, even though God is coming to judge the wicked, but if we believe on Jesus, we're going to be gathered with the righteous. For I will make you a name and a praise among all people of the earth when I turn back your captivity. Captivity from what? From sin. Isn't it? Before your eyes, saith the Lord. So three very small chapters in the Bible, but we're reminded again that God is good, that God is going to judge the wicked, but if we believe on Jesus Christ, we'll be spared that judgment, won't we? And that's why when we look through the Bible, even when we look at these minor prophets and we're told a little bit about Judah and Israel, we're always reminded about God's goodness. That Jesus, when he went on the cross, do you remember? He took the judgment. So all that wrath in Zephaniah, aren't you glad that because of Jesus we're spared from that wrath that we deserve? And if we just put our faith on him, Jesus takes the punishment for us. We need to make sure we understand that and we put our faith on the Lord Jesus. Okay, so I hope that taught you a little bit about Habakkuk and Zephaniah. Now you know a little bit more about the background. Between Zephy's name. Okay, we're going to play some games today. Have a bit of fun. Last week we did a craft, so we'll do some games today. So let's stand up and we'll go to the back and we'll separate us into teams and we'll have a few games. <laughs>